Hi all, I hope you're all well. Welcome to this taster session for those of you who have elected to do politics next year. And as you can see from the subheading below, there's a task which we're going to look at today, which is um, a debate. And the key issue in the debate is should the voting age for all UK elections be lowered to 16? We'll come on to that in a bit. But before we do, I just thought I would start today's session by giving you a bit of an overview of what A-level politics involves. First of all, you can see that the exam board is AQA. And over the course of the two years, you'll be looking at three key focus topics. The first, government and politics of the UK. Second, government and politics of the USA. And that includes a comparative section, which means that you need to look at the USA um, and the various aspects of the political system in that country and compare them to the same aspects um, and how they operate maybe in a, similar, in a similar way or differently in the UK. And then finally, number three, political ideas. Um, that's where you will look at some of the key political thinkers over the years who have developed some of the theory behind politics as it exists today. All of those topics are assessed by their own two hour exam and the exams all feature a mixture of medium length explain questions and essay style questions. So that means there's no coursework in politics. However, you are required to keep abreast of political developments in both the UK and the USA throughout the whole two years of your course. So in terms of coursework, you don't need to uh, write a lengthy essay or anything that um, shows your engagement with the course, but you will need to use key examples that you have gained over the course of your study, which you can then deploy in your exam. It's a real key part of success in politics. So please do start a political diary or journal now. And some useful resources that you might want to um, look at on a regular basis uh, are listed right at the end of this slide. And they include things like BBC Politics, politics.co.uk, politicshome.com, politico.com, USA Today, the Wall Street Journal, The Economist, and probably the, the best resource of all, uh, this is a teacher actually telling you to get onto social media, is Twitter. Um, there's lots of things that you can have access to on a daily basis just by following the right institutions or even the right people. What can you expect? You can expect huge controversy. You can expect lively debate. Uh, you can expect real contemporary issues. So when you're looking at the UK politics and UK government topic, you'll study and discuss questions like what is Brexit all about and why is it happening? What powers does our, does our Prime Minister have? Uh, why was the result of the 2017 general election such a surprise? And obviously we've since had a 2019 election, so we'll study that one as well. Um, and is Britain truly democratic? For US politics, we'll be looking at things like how did Donald Trump become president? Why is it so easy to have a gun in the USA? And why is race such a big issue in America? As I've already said, you'll have the opportunity to compare and contrast US in UK politics too. Finally, political ideas, you'll examine some of the great ideas that shaped our world for good or for ill, including uh, such concepts as liberalism, socialism and conservatism. Uh, and that will involve looking at some of the key figures um, uh, within those topics like Karl Marx, Mary Wollstonecraft and Edmund Burke. I genuinely think that the course that you're about to start is one that's uh, lively, engaging and uh, above all, it's extremely uh, contemporary, as you're about to see from the uh, topic that I'm going to focus on in today's taster session. So your task in this session is to look at the question that I flagged right at the start. Should the voting age for all UK elections be lowered to 16? Now, those of you that have um, some prior knowledge of politics in the UK will know that there are some elections within uh, the UK that already allow uh, 16 year olds to vote. Um, so Scottish parliamentary elections, uh, for example, um, there's very recently been a decision in Wales to allow the um, uh, Welsh Assembly uh, to be elected by um, those 16 and above. Um, but the general election that we have every, in theory, every five years in the UK 
um, still has 18 as the, um, the, the minimum age for, um, uh, to, to, for the right to vote. And there's a big debate about whether this should be changed. So why does that happen? Why, why is there always this debate? Well, as I've said, politics is about contemporary issues. It's about what matters to us. And obviously, as young people, one of the things that lots of um, young people who are invested in politics think is that there are all these decisions being taken by those that govern the country, yet you guys have absolutely no say directly in who should make those decisions. So the key word here is participation. Um, oftentimes you get uh, people who are more mature in years saying, well, the young people, what do they know? The young people, look at them, they're out and they're um, not engaging with the society that they exist in. But quite rightly, young people respond with the argument that they're not able to directly participate, particularly when it comes to elections, because they're not given the right to vote. So that's where I want to really focus in today's short task to give you a flavour of what to expect in politics. So in recent years, there's been a, a real concern amongst many, many people within the country, including political elites, that participation and engagement in politics has been in terminal decline. Um, so there's a statistic there for you to have a look at. Since the 1916, um, sorry, 1960s, uh, there's been a, a real steady decline in the turnout for all general elections. So the 1959 general election had a turnout of 78.7%, .7%, which means that every um, uh, of all the people that are entitled to vote, 78.7% of those um, decided to do so. In 2001, the turnout tumbled to just 59.4%. So when we study this um, in, uh, in year 12, you will uh, begin to ask questions like why? Well, why is that the case? What are the reasons why people are being switched off of politics? Why is it that they're not engaging directly in the political process? Um, it is true to say that the last general election in 2019 saw slightly better figures of 67.3%, but we are nowhere near um, the, uh, the, the highs of the uh, 1950s and early 1960s. So why is that the case? So your focus uh, for the next half an hour or so is going to be, would giving the vote to 16 year olds enhance the degree of political participation in the UK? So what I'd like you to do is to read the article below and then do the, um, the, the, the brief activities that follow. So there's an article that you're going to um, uh, open shortly from The Independent. Um, it is actually from early 2019, so it's before the 2019 election and talks about that as if it's looming, but it's still really relevant and the way it pre presents the arguments I think are uh, really clear and, and, and really accessible for you. The two things that you're then going to do are to create a simple table with two columns to out the, the, outline the reasons for lowering the voting age for all elections to 16 and the reasons against lowering the voting age for all elections to 16. There are a huge number of reasons, uh, both for and against, um, either directly uh, listed in the article or implied in the article, but you can also add others not in the article if you wish, if you're uh, starting to have your own ideas on this. Some of you may well already um, have taken um, an active interest in this debate, uh, as it's something which directly affects you. Once you've done that table, you're going to use the arguments that you've got in your table to write a short paragraph. And this should be short. Remember, I've said that this activity in total shouldn't take more than half an hour. So you're not going to be producing more than half a side. But in that half a side, you're going to advocate the side of the argument that you favour. So you can choose that you're for this debate or against it. And you are going to write a short paragraph, no more than half a side. Uh, to argue that particular point of view. Remember, within your argument, you should be looking to critique the view you disagree with, as well as outlining the positives in the argument that you agree with. So if you'd like to pause the, um, the screencastify now, um, then you can um, 
begin that activity, remember, you shouldn't take more than half an hour. Uh, and once you've finished that activity, um, if you'd like to continue the presentation, um, then I'll do a brief plenary and um, hopefully give you some more uh, things that you can be excited about uh, as you approach the study of politics for your A-level. Welcome back. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the task and you were able to engage with the, uh, the issue of whether or not the uh, right to vote in all elections in the UK should be extended to those aged 16 and over. Now, the debate that you've considered today is an actual topic you will look at in more detail during your politics course over the next two years. Um, towards the end of year 12, when you are looking at British politics still, but uh, beginning to look at some of the, uh, the issues facing British politics, um, and in this case, we're uh, particularly uh, talking about the, um, the, the problems I've already hinted at that uh, people are anticipating will only get worse to do with uh, political participation, um, you'll study the ways that we perhaps can seek to rectify those issues and one of those is the possibility of extending the, uh, the vote to those aged 16 and over. So you will already have a flavour of um, a particularly uh, controversial issue in politics um, and also a flavour of how we engage with those issues and the um, thing that I'm really keen to try and uh, get you to be involved with as we go through the two years is um, lively debate. Um, I really want you to, to, to advocate your own opinions as long as you listen respectfully to one another. Um, those of you that disagree are those that make the lessons uh, the more and more interesting um, as the, the, the weeks and months go, uh, go along. Um, Often we will try and do uh, a similar type of activity. So um, yes, there will be uh, some necessary book work at times, but um, on other occasions I'll find um, resources that I think are uh, useful and engaging for you. Um, I'll ask you to read them. Um, you'll access the information within them and try and condense that into your own notes. And then there'll be some activity which involves um, you really analyzing the, um, the data. Uh, analyzing the information to try and make your own mind up as to what um, the, uh, in your opinion, the best way forward is uh, surrounding the particular debate. Um, for me, the, the task that you've just done um, and other similar contemporary issues are examples of why politics is such an exciting, relevant topic for you and for everyone else in society. Every single act we commit is in fact political. Now, obviously it doesn't matter on a um, macro scale to everybody, but on a micro scale, even the most mundane things that we do, for example, choosing one product over another for breakfast, has a political um, focus. Um, so if I give you an example, um, if I go to Tesco's and I decide to um, peruse the breakfast cereal aisle, um, regularly I'll buy uh, Cheerios, which are the breakfast cereal of choice in my household at the moment. Um, both myself and the, uh, the children like it. So I will um, often buy the, I think it's £3.30 box of uh, branded Cheerios um, that Tesco's has uh, conveniently placed on the middle shelf uh, for everyone to see. Last week I decided to buy the uh, Tesco's own brand Cheerios. Um, mainly because they were two pound cheaper. I brought them home. Uh, the next morning, the children had uh, Cheerios for breakfast, or what I said were Cheerios for breakfast, and um, they rejected them outright. They said they didn't taste the same, they didn't like them. And why, Daddy, have you bought these uh, awful breakfast cereals for us? It's a political issue. I've made the decision because of uh, financial um, uh, constraints to uh, purchase a cheap alternative. And the children have decided that they are going to try and exert their power over their father by rejecting the breakfast cereal that I've chosen. So as I said, it's a very micro scale, but you can see that there are those um, political uh, elements to uh, literally everything that we do in life. Um, your relationships with your friends and your family, 
um, the decisions that you've taken over uh, your uh, A levels, um, the uh, activities that you, ch you choose to do outside of school, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, and they are just things that affect you. But if you um, uh, extrapolate that out to a, a, a bigger scale, a more macro scale, then you can see that it really matters whether there are protests going on um, on a, a on a weekend and what they're about. It really matters whether um, we have a particular person as prime minister. Uh, or somebody else. It, it really matters whether um, in America there are um, uh, debates over gun control and um, they're continually rejected, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So for me, it's fascinating to be able to study the arguments for and against some of the key issues that affect our lives today on an almost daily basis in lessons. In short, politics really matters. And so just to finish, I thought I would um, give you some other examples of contemporary political issues, um, most of which I'm sure you could have thought about for yourself. Um, but if you are thinking about what can I do to um, help prepare my mind for politics and the debates that might occur in politics uh, next year, um, then what I would really uh, urge you to do, um, in addition to uh, starting to keep a political journal or a political diary, um, accessing Twitter, following the major political parties, following um, some of the major political leaders, um, is to look at some of these contemporary debates and um, a bit like you've done for the activity today, um, engage with them to practice your analytical skills. So being really, really topical, should the coronavirus lockdown have started earlier? Um, uh, again, uh, a contemporary debate about um, whether statues of former leaders who uh, are found to have been involved in the slave, tr slave trade should be removed. Um, uh, should children from low-income families receive free school meals over the summer holiday? Something that um, Marcus Rashford has been campaigning for so hard. Um, will Brexit finally be completed on the 31st of December 2020? We are currently in a, a transition phase, but despite the coronavirus shutdown, um, the government is adamant that uh, Brexit will finally be completed on the 31st of December, deal or no deal. Um, I've already uh, referred to this, but it is such a, a key debate that it's one that you might want to try and engage with. Should gun controls be introduced in the US um, despite the Second Amendment? Uh, you may not know what the Second Amendment uh, is, but it's uh, written in the US Constitution that um, the American citizens have a right to bear arms. Um, and it's a legacy from the uh, War of Independence, but it's what gives those that advocate being allowed to have guns in America um, the right to continue to have those. Um, is Donald Trump's often flagrant use of Twitter appropriate for a world leader? And finally, um, something a little bit different, should her, Huawei be allowed to work with Western companies on 5G standards? Obviously, there's a big uh, discussion and debate about whether that is going to give China too much influence into um, uh, society in the Western world. And the list is potentially endless. There are huge numbers of other debates that you might want to try and access. All I would encourage you to do is to make sure you regularly read the news. Um, I've already said, make sure you sign up to uh, particularly Twitter um, and, other, um, uh, and follow the, the relevant um, uh, political um, links, uh, either newspapers or political parties or individuals um, to try and uh, get a regular rundown of some of the uh, political um, discussions and events that are happening um, and try and really build your excitement for what I hope will be a fantastic two years studying in politics. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure um, speaking to you today um, and I can't wait to, uh, uh, to meet you all in person, um, hopefully at the start of next academic year. Um, thanks and goodbye.